Recently, my daughter gave me an old photo that she wanted restoring. This is how it looked when I photographed the original so you can see how faded it is. Most of the time you don't need specialist tools to restore old photos like this. Affinity Photo and Photoshop have everything you need. Before I could start restoring this old photo, I first needed to capture it digitally. You can do this by photographing it, but it's much easier if you have access to a flatbed scanner. Here's what the photo looked like when I scanned it and saved it as a 16-bit TIFF image. Now I'm using a 16-bit TIFF format rather than the 8-bit format to ensure that I don't create any banding of the tones when I start to fix the fading. Next, if we look at the size of the document using the resize command, you can see that it's a little over 11 inches by 9 inches. This is larger than I intend for the finished image. What the additional size gives me is some room to crop the image. If you look closely at the scan, you can see the edges of the mount that it was glued to. To crop the image, select the crop tool from the toolbar. This displays a grid over the image, which I can then resize to select the area I want to keep. When the crop is in position, I click the apply button. By the way, in Affinity Photo, the crop tool is non-destructive. If I select it again and click the reveal option in the toolbar, you can see the edges that I cropped away. It's then still possible to adjust the crop if you need to. The next step in the photo restoration is to correct the photo's contrast and remove the sepia tint. A good method for doing this is by adding the levels adjustment to the image. In the dialog, select the red channel in the drop down to adjust it. We now need to drag the black level on the left so that it meets the start of the red histogram. Then do the same with the white level on the right, dragging it to meet the right edge of the histogram. When you've done that, switch to the green channel and repeat the steps. First move the black level to meet the left edge of the histogram, and then the white level to meet the other end. Finally switch to the blue channel and set the black and white levels to meet each side of the blue channel histogram. The adjustment that we've just made does two things. First it sets the white balance which removes the discolouring of the photo. Secondly, it corrects the contrast to remove the fading. Having done that, we're then able to see any damage to the photo that we still need to restore. Let's zoom in to 200% magnification so that we can see the detail clearly. To restore this photo, I'm going to work on cleaning up the lady first. To do this, I'll add a new empty layer to the top of the image, and I'll use this to apply my repair. To make the repair, I'm going to be using the Affinity Photo Inpainting Brush Tool. You'll find this in the tools palette on the left of the interface. It's grouped with several other repair tools, so one of these may be shown if you can't see this brush. Just click the bottom right of the icon to show all the tools in the group. You can then click the inpainting brush to select it. Now before we use this, we want to change some settings in the toolbar. First is the drop down, which we want to set to sample the current layer and below. This allows us to make the repair onto the new layer that we added. The other thing is that I like to use the brush with the opacity and flow both set to 100%, but I have the hardness set to about 80% to give the brush a slightly soft edge. These settings seem to work well when restoring old photos and they don't remove as much of the photo detail. After applying the settings, use a very small brush to paint over the dust spots. For small spots, click on the spot and the inpainting brush will remove it. For larger marks, click and drag to paint over the area you want to repair. Then when you release the mouse button, it applies the fix. The secret to doing this well is to work slowly, only fixing small areas at a time. Be patient and don't try to paint over too large an area. You may also find that you need to paint over some areas a couple of times to make a convincing repair. Here's what the photo looked like when I've removed all the spots and marks from the lady. If I hide the layer, you can see everything that's been removed. Now earlier I mentioned that when I made this scan, it was larger than I needed. Part of the reason was to allow me to crop the unwanted edges away. But there's another benefit, which is that it makes it easier to see the dust to remove it. Then later when I reduce the final image after restoration, any remaining dust becomes too small to see. So far I've only removed the dust from the lady, but there's a lot of marks on the rest of the photo. I don't really want to spend a lot of time removing these because the rest of the scene isn't that important. 
Fortunately, Affinity Photo has a filter that I can use to quickly remove unwanted dust. In the Layers menu, I'll select New Life Filter Layer, followed by Noise, and then Dust and Scratches. You can then see the New Life Filter Layer attached to the Pixel Layer where we've been applying the repair. This means that it will only affect that layer, but we don't want that, we want it to apply to the rest of the image. To do this, click and drag the filter, removing it from the layer that it's attached to, and then drop it at the top of the other layers. Now I can adjust the radius and tolerance sliders to remove a lot of the dust spots. The only problem now is that the filter is affecting the woman in the photo as well. To fix this, we can add a layer mask to the live filter layer. Then using the regular brush tool set to black, we can then paint over the woman to protect her from the effect of the filter. When you do this, be sure that you have the layer mask selected and aren't painting directly onto the photo. It also helps to have your opacity and flow set to 100% as well as the hardness. This makes it easier to paint over the woman and not spill over into the background. Notice how the detail returns to the woman as I'm painting. If I turn off the filter layer, you can see the difference that it's making to the background. Now we just have some blue smudges and a few spots to deal with. The easy way to repair the colour smudges is by applying a black and white adjustment layer to the image. Having done that, I can then see a few more areas that I want to fix. I'll therefore add a new empty layer and reselect the in-painting brush. I can then paint over the problem areas to apply a repair to the new layer. Now in some areas, you may see problems where the dust and scratches filter is removing shadows and highlights. To prevent this, reselect the brush tool and then paint on the mask attached to that layer. This will fix the problem, but in some cases you may find it reveals dust again. If it does, select the top pixel layer and then using the in-painting brush tool, paint over the dust to remove it. We're now removing most of the problems with the filter and then cleaning up selected areas where it's not doing such a good job. Now that we've repaired all the areas of the photo, I can export the finished image. The format I'm going to use for the export is JPEG. I'm also going to resize the image to be 8 inches wide when I export it, which is 2400 pixels. And here's the result. Now one of the problems you might encounter when scanning old photos to restore is that the scans appear soft. When this happens, the best software I've found for fixing the problems is Topaz Sharpen AI, which I discuss in this video. It's a great one to watch next. Thanks for watching today and I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video.